Thank you very much. And, uh, you know, Minister, I really welcome this debate today. And I also very much welcome the, the launch of the new five year apprenticeship action plan for 10,000 new apprentices registration what we're saying is by 2025 and in the minister's opening statement he said that they're on course uh, for 9,000 new apprentices so really that's really important and the other thing is and I really want to welcome and I don't know if a lot of us were aware of it today that there is 67 apprenticeship programs um, that's really marvellous and I think maybe that's something minister that we might get more information on if you could maybe send this email and maybe just give us the, the different programmes. I think it would be important for us and for our own constituencies that, that we can, you know, share the whatever we can to help and maybe, you know, let people know what is there. Um, as you know, everyone learns in different ways and a plan to provide a roadmap to a single apprenticeship system and the new supports for both employees and apprenticeships is great. But right now we are in a serious place in apprenticeships because of the delays in program and early pay, particularly for apprentices, is a huge issue in conditions. And the other big issue, Minister, that I've come across is accommodation. A lot of, a lot of apprentices are telling me that they find it hard to get accommodation. Um, I do welcome the new state-of-the-art apprenticeship facility at the TU of Shannon's, uh, camp, uh, Shannon campus in Athlone with the capacity for up to a thousand apprentices a year. Um, but we need to grow our domestic uh, supply of trades. I, we're looking at nursing, agriculture, building, motor and hospitality industries, because we are losing a lot of our young people to other countries um, over the pay and conditions. And I think, you know, Minister, that's something we really need to address. Um, and I know that your department um, is examining the issues of the apprenticeship pay and how maybe to better financially support them. And I know that's something that you are looking at. Having equal access to apprenticeships, irrespective of background, gender, age, apprenticeships should, ships should be an option for all. But if someone signs up for an apprenticeship, they should receive their proper phase of learning properly. And, and I know some of them have, I would know people that I would have been speaking to and look at, I don't know what would have happened, but they would have left, they wouldn't have got their qualifications. And I think that's something we need to kind of make sure that, that I don't know what the statistics are, but I think that needs to be looked at. Apprenticeship should be an option within the, uh, the national education and training system, transforming apprenticeships from a well-established route to a career in a niche area, such as maybe craft professions, to a well-established route to a broad range of careers, and which is attractive, of course, to our employees and our learners. Um, Minister, I, I spoke, I'm after having some meetings recently and I spoke to Minister Harris today. Oh, and I also want to welcome the expansion for veterinary, uh, the 250 places. I think that's really important. I know that was uh, announced yesterday and I, I really think that's a positive step. But I spoke to Minister Anne Rabbit about this. Minister, in CDNT in Carlo, we've got 50% staff in our occupational therapists, physios, speech and language, dietitians, and there's huge, I suppose, what can I say? I had um, Carlo Autism Group up yesterday, and there a few months ago, I met with Carlo Down Syndrome, and I can only say how, how, how can I say, the families were just so, I suppose, just felt so, I, I don't know, they were, I, I just can't explain how bad they felt that their children, um, needed occupational therapists, speech and language therapists, they just weren't getting them because the system was failing them. And the fact that Carlo has only a 50% staff rate within their teams is a huge issue for me. Now, I did speak to Minister Harris and I've had a few meetings with Minister Anne Rabbit, but my understanding is that there's going to be an expression of interest for therapists in your next phase going forward. And the reason I am bringing this up today, Minister, is that I believe within the children's sector we are hitting that crisis. And as I said, I'm having meetings with, with families every day. And I just feel that there's something needs to be done here. And I'm asking you now, and I've asked Minister Simon Harris, I've said it to Minister Anne Rabbit, we need to contact the HSE. We need to get all the different departments together. And we need to look at this, because my concern is the only one suffering here is the children. And the reason they are suffering is, and you know that yourself, Minister, timing for a child is crucial. Early intervention for a child that needs therapy. 
um, is going to be, it's just the, of the utmost. So, Minister, while we have this chance now, and I want to compliment yourself and Minister Harris on the good work that you have done, and I would see it myself. Carlow has now become a university town and county in Kilkenny for the South East, and I see the changes and that's bringing to the people of Carlow and the surrounding areas. So I welcome that, but our apprenticeships are so important, and how we recruit whether through our universities, through our apprenticeships, is going to be hugely important. Like, my worry is, and I'm spokesperson for children, as you know, within our own government, and I just see, Minister, that if we don't recruit within the sector of the HSE for therapists, the children are losing out. So my plea today is to yourself, to Minister Anne Rabbit, to Minister Simon Harris, to the HSC. Now, I'm CHO5, and I might as well tell you, Minister, I am in contact with them, but they're not easy to get. And I find I'm constantly going back and going back and going back. What I'm looking for is a forward plan, a plan that we could look at getting more staff in this area, recruiting more staff. I'm sure you, with your team in the department, could find a niche here, could find a way of recruiting within this sector where we are really, 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 I believe, on our knees. And I know that the, the occupational therapists and the physios, they're all doing their best, and I'm not in any way saying that they're not. But it's very hard to work in Carlo, CDNT, with 50% staff. It's unfair on the staff as there, and it's also unfair on the families and the children. And as I said, I, I did have Carlo Autism Group up yesterday meeting uh, Minister Anne Rabbit. It is a priority for me. So the one thing I ask today with all the good work that you're doing is that we look at this area where I believe there is a crisis. Thank you so much.